Okay, hello again people. I hope we're all well. Today, uh, Saturday, it's about two o'clock now and I'm out walking the Roach Valley Way. It starts from here in Rochford. It's in Essex. So it's a long distance route. It's 23 miles. If you want to tackle it in a day, it's going to take you nine hours. I'm going to try and wild camp at some point. I've got a uh, PDF document printed out here a lot of information a lot of history to tell you about and I've got my OS map as well I've already had to ask for directions <laughs> as always and I'm just heading down South Street now through Rochford uh, out to the more rural parts shall we say Excuse the traffic noise, but uh, here's the River Roach, and there's a pub here, the Horse and Groom. What do we reckon? Is it a bit too early to go in a pub? Nah, of course not. Right, to the pub. I've got half a pint of Aspel for £1.80. I've got a lovely view, as you can see. <laughs> right next to this seafood shack. And I don't know if you can see this in this the glare of the light, but I've got the OS map out here just looking at the route so it's starting at Rochford I am about here at the moment and we're following it all the way around along the River Roach and then heading inland a bit up to Pagglesham Pagglesham Church End and then there's a campsite there but I want to uh, I want to try and get past that along the, uh, the other bank of the other estuary and then somehow camp along here tonight and then come back down to Canoodon in the morning and then you're following it all the way round and then it's heading into Hockley Woods which is just off the map coming off the map and then we're coming back round and back into Rochford where I'm parked in the freight car park which is next to the train station okay so we're turning down Watts Lane and this is the Roach Valley Way. I've just seen the first, the first little sign for it. So it's right by the pub, which is convenient. So yeah, it's from uh, this document here, the Roach Valley Way, which is uh, published by Essex County Council Planning. And yeah, I'm basically going to be sourcing all my material and historical tidbits from that okay uh, as I say it's quite a lot to read the Roach Valley Way is a 23 mile circular walk around South East Essex leading you through a rich variety of landscapes from the ancient woodlands of Hockley to the expansive coastal margins of the Roach and Crouch estuaries the walk was originally devised by Rochford District Council's conservation project in 1986 However, 10 years on, the project team had long since disbanded. The original guide leaflet was out of print and the route unclear on the ground. Staff and pupils from the Dean's School at Benfleet have a long association with the Roach Valley Way. Having participated in the inaugural walk in 1986 and used the route for sponsored walks ever since, they were keen to see it restored. Since 1994, the school has been working in partnership with Ways Through Essex, Essex County Council's Public Rights of Way project to re-establish the Roach Valley Way. 
With generous financial support from Barclays New Futures, this new guidebook has been produced and the route is now clearly waymarked on the ground. As I'm scanning along this little uh, forest track beside the, the River Roach, I'll just tell you a little bit about uh, the kit I've got today. So I've got my uh, OEX Valo 35 litre rucksack again. I'm kind of liking this rucksack at the moment. It's my uh, pack of choice. So got that and then in that uh, I've got a few little bits of OEX kit again and I've got my new OEX gas stove. I think it's called the XT3 and it's like the big stove with the fold out legs and I'm going to test that out. Uh, I've also bought out the Vargo Titanium Hexagon wood stove. I haven't used it for ages and just really really wanted to crack it out. And the main new bit of kit I've got which I'm going to do a gear video on at some point is I've got a new model of the Rav Ridge Raider Hoot Bivy. So as you probably know if you subscribe to the channel I'm a massive fan of the Ridge Raider. I've got the old model, the really old model. Uh, it broke when I was doing the Shotley Peninsula and I thought it's curtains for it, I'm going to have to get rid of it. So I looked on eBay, found a newer model and they usually retail about £270, which is a hell of a lot of money. And the person selling it had used it once. It was in immaculate condition and they wanted £197 for it or best offer. And I thought I'm going to be cheeky and I went off a £150 for it. And I couldn't believe it. They actually accepted my offer. I thought, shit, <laughs> I've got to fork out £150. Quid. But still, that is a bargain. I've saved over £100 on... You know the retail price of it and it's it's literally brand spanking new there was no dirt on it or anything so that's turned up and yeah i've got that so i'm going to be testing that out it's that time again let's get ready to ramble and let's get ready to walk and there's the first disc i've seen of the roach valley way so I want to keep looking out for those. We just come out to this road here, and opposite is uh, Broom Hills, which is now like a, a retirement home. Broom Hills was formerly the home of the 18th century magistrate, Captain John Harriet, founder of the Thames River Police. Despite his position, he made use of the illegal activity of smuggling prevalent in the area at this time. In his struggles through life, he recalls how in 1786 he sought out smugglers at an inn in Dunkirk to obtain a boat ride home to England, knowing it would land within a few miles of his home at Stanbridge. <laughs> Crafty devil. <laughs> oh, yeah, while we're walking along here, I'd just like to say again, a really big thank you to everyone for all the support lately. Doing these, uh, like these, the last sort of three part sort of, uh, sagas if you will that I've been doing you know like the what was it the Shotley Peninsula and then the Tolsbury Marshes um, since I've been combining like the walk and wild camp sort of things I've noticed I haven't had as many views as I would if I just did a wild camp but the comments and stuff overall have been a lot better so it's kind of like quality over quantity if you will and uh, yeah, the support's been really good. So I'd just really like to say another big thank you to everyone. Um, I can't remember all of your names, I'm afraid, I'm sorry. But regulars, I've got like Piccolo64, Andy Wells. Um, God, Will Bourne. Uh, who else was there? <laughs> I know there's uh, a few more of you, but yeah, always, always commenting and sort of uh you know just sort of leaving really nice things so yeah cheers i really appreciate that thank you oh, at last we've come out to the river roach estuary and we'll be turning left and we'll be following it on our right 
for quite some way. We sort of had to skirt all around the boatyard over there and like Stanbridge Mills. But yeah, now we're out to this. It's absolutely lovely. And yeah, some of you may be thinking, well, we've seen this before, Tom. It's sort of similar to sort of a lot of things you've done before, but you know, sometimes, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's just, it's just nice. This is my kind of walking. I like rivers, estuaries, coastal walks, that sort of thing. Uh, not really a fan of like forests and countryside walking. You know, I've, I've grown up around all that stuff and I don't know, maybe I've always wanted to live out by the coast, I don't know, but this is absolutely stunning. Who would have thought this is literally like five minutes down the road from South End on Sea and not that far from London either. So, and it's under an hour's drive from my house as well. Absolutely brilliant. Agriculture in these coastal areas has seen many changes. Traditionally, the marshes were grazed by cattle and sheep, but most have now been drained and are used to grow crops. As we're walking along by the River Roach here, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about one of the more interesting, I think, pieces of history in Rochford. The peculiar people were a unique religious sect of indigenous to Essex, originated in Rochford. Their name comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14. The Lord hath chosen thee to be a, pe a peculiar people unto himself. James Barnard, a Rochford shoemaker, founded the sect in 1838. His congregation endured widespread hostility as their practices were regarded with suspicion. Their attire made them readily identifiable as the men were clean shaven and wore bowler hats, whilst the ladies wore black bonnets. They rejected orthodox medicine and were frequently in court on charges of manslaughter. However, many cures were reported to occur in the homes and chapels of the peculiars by anointing with oil and the laying on of hands. So we've just come from this footpath here it's been a little bit of a inland walking through some fields, so not that interesting. And we've come out to Stanitz Creek. It was formerly a navigable watercourse from Paglesham, but has since been dammed to form a settling lagoon, which provides an important watering and preening site for resident wildfowl and overwintering birds, such as dark-bellied Brent geese. Okay, so we started here at Rochford by the train station, gone along here, Stanbridge Mills, Broom Hills, and then followed all the way along the estuary here, uh, the River Roach, Barton Hall Creek, went round that and then started heading inland, and now we're here at Stanitz Creek. A little bit further along we've got we've got Paglesham East End and then further up Paglesham Church End. So I've done a walk there before and uh, it's a really nice nice little area that and then of course we'll be heading up heading up to join the River Crouch and heading along that for a bit and then I'm going to wild camp somewhere, hopefully wild camp somewhere up there. And then you see in the centre of the screen, the green footpath there, that's the Roach Valley Way. Heading down that 
into Canudum. Canudum's going to be quite interesting because that's like the epicenter of like witchcraft in the county. Uh, some say in the country as well. It's sort of one of those villages where like there's a lot of uh, a lot of stories about witches and. Apparently there's like more witches in Canudan than anywhere, I think in Essex or maybe in England, I'm not sure. So yeah, when we get there, I'll tell you a bit about that. So these cottages here are called the OBS Cottages. They were built in the mid 19th century by Lady Olivia Bernard Sparrow, who at the time owned South and East Hall Farms, which I've just come through. During her lifetime, Lady Olivia strove to provide an education for the poorer children of Essex. During the early 19th century there was no formal education system and the only schools which did exist were private, fee-paying ones. The vast majority of poor children were therefore deprived of an education. Lady Olivia was responsible for the construction of day schools and with the help of Reverend Herschel ensured that many of the poorer children of Hadley and Lee were taught to read and write, providing opportunities previously denied to them. South Hall and East Hall, so called because of their location in relation to St Peter's Church, are examples of early medieval farmsteads whose ownership can be traced back to two freemen during the reign of Edward the Confessor. The estates were eventually passed down to Lady Olivia Bernard Sparrow. So this is South Hall here. I'll just read you a bit about East Hall. The most easterly point of the walk was formerly known as Packlesham Hall and was once owned by Lord Rich of Rochford. In 1944 East Hall and the surrounding land was given to the nation for use by the National Vegetable Research Station for seed trials. Whoever knew one of those existed. Both halls have now been replaced by modern houses, but the old brew house and part of its moat can still be seen at East Hall. Pretty flat landscape, I know. <laughs> but uh, we're at East Hall, and this is <laughs> clues in the name. We're at the most easterly point of the entire Roach Valley Way now. So from now on, it's all going to be over that way. <laughs> <laughs> so far, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, haven't got lost yet. Going well so far. Elm trees were extensively planted on roadsides throughout most of Britain from Victorian times and in Essex became distinctive features of the rural landscape. These majestic trees provided local landmarks and tree hollow elm pollards which stood on the bend of the road near East Hall until the early 1980s are the subject of much local folklore. Known as the Three Old Widows, these hollow trees were reputedly used by smugglers to hide their booty and tales are told of up to £200 worth of silk being hidden in them at any one time. So they was up by East Hall, I never saw them which was quite annoying. Um, there's a little gap through there now, but no, they would have been further along the road. I missed them, sorry about that. In 1888, JFTW, a writer and journalist in the county, refers to these trees in A Legend of Pagglesham. He tells how lovers would meet by the trees under the moonlight to spoon and listen to the nightingales dirty bugger. Unfortunately, didn't say that by the way, unfortunately the trees have now gone, oh that's why they've now gone, sorry, so I actually yeah, they don't exist anymore, right okay. Unfortunately the trees have now gone but their memories live on through these stories and through my YouTube video. 